2023 was a thoroughly exciting year for movies. The BFBs were enchanted by promising debuts from emerging independent voices, as well as powerful entries from pre-established giants. We all made it to the theater for Barbenheimer, in some cases more than once, and we all reveled in the discourse of an engaged movie-watching society. These are the BFB's picks for the best movies of 2023. As Wes Anderson's style has matured over the last decade or so, contradictory accusations have piled up. People say his films have become obscenely quirky, impenetrable, crustified, or cold. No single film has been more of a flashpoint for this criticism than his newest feature, Asteroid City, which, on top of being my favorite film of 2023, may also be his greatest, next to the undeniable Grand Budapest Hotel. Anderson uses his ludicrous, multi-layered structure with shocking deafness to explore everything from the absurdity of those who refuse to embrace artifice as a pathway to broader human expression to the continuing legacy of 20th century American paranoia. All packaged in a sub-two-hour comedy that references Tennessee Williams as much as Looney Tunes. Asteroid City is densely packed with deeply human narratives that seem to explode from between the margins and exhibits the formal precision of a master at the height of his powers. It is, without question, one of the best films of the 21st century. My favorite film of the year focuses on two gay virgins. Bottoms, directed by Emma Seelgman and written by Seelgman and one half of the on-screen star duo Rachel Senna. Senna and her partner in crime, Ewa Debri, string the audience along on a wild ride as they hatch a plan to lose their virginities to cheerleaders by beginning a fight club in their high school. While Senna and Debri carry the film, the ensemble cast is not to be underestimated. Everyone, including Marshawn Lynch, makes the most of the outrageous writing and smart direction. I brought my father to see the film with me, and to my delight, he enjoyed the film as much as I did. This film has the trait that, in my opinion, can make or break a comedy. You're so busy laughing that you miss three other jokes. Oh well, all the more reason to watch it all over again. As I pondered which movie this year made the biggest impression on me, I couldn't help but default to the performance that most destroyed me, Charles Melton in May-December. Many have charted Melton's evolution from campy C.W. Riverdale to Todd Haynes' rising star as impressive in itself, but his acting in this devastating melodrama is truly some of the best of the decade. Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore co-star in Haynes' reflective and deeply twisted portrait of a family born from grooming and abuse. Portman plays an actress who is set to portray a deceivingly naive housewife who married the boy she abused when he was in middle school. As the actress observes the scandalous couple's dynamic, she gets wrapped up in their life. In the middle of this tension of mimicry is Melton's Joe, who plays Moore's much younger husband. The movie is quite dark and Haynes' brutal sense of humor comes through at unexpected times, whether it be via the insertion of a heavy soap opera score or Portman's character's reliably disturbing lack of shame. However, it is Melton's restrained vulnerability that makes May-December as acidic and memorable as it is. It is a truly hypnotic bad time. Ever since I watched Past Lives in a theater this summer, I have sung nothing but its praises. Seling's song directed such a compelling story about two childhood best friends, played by Greta Lee and Taeyo Yu from South Korea, reuniting in their adulthood in the streets of New York City. Every frame is carefully composed, down to the characters' matching gazes and lingering hand placements, and the film's poetic score supports each scene, bringing you into its tranquil world. The film's warming screenplay pulls inspiration from songs on experiences, making each performance feel incredibly unique. Past Lives easily became my top film of 2023 after one viewing and a sea of tears as the credits rolled. It is not just a film about contemplating what could have been. It is also a story that could be universally beloved by anyone, no matter how they interpret it. My favorite film of 2023 was Passages, the Irish sax film starring Franz Rogowski, Ben Wishaw, and Adele Exarchopoulos. It's a movie about a gay couple where one of the partners, Franz Rogowski, uh, sleeps with a woman, Exarchopoulos, and throws the relationship into chaos. Uh, it's sexy, it's funny, it's heartbreaking, and so smart, and something that we just don't get anymore, which is a well-realized, well-rounded adult drama 
about real people that doesn't shy away from any of the horrible things we do to each other in search of desire and the search of our own purpose within our own lives. It's a really absolute gem of a film that I hope we get to see more of.